Hi, we're out on a range today, so please bear with gunfire in the background, and there might be some other noises as well. Now, what we're talking about is, over a long period of time, I've gotten many different requests of many different versions of the question. If you have your firearm with you on your person in your vehicle, and you are legally carrying it, and you have your permit or license with you, and you're driving and you get pulled over by the police for some minor infraction like failure to signal, what should you do? I've been reluctant to do a presentation on that because although of course I have my opinions on the subject, they are certainly not any kind of expert opinion. However, now we do have an expert with us. Now there's been some miscommunication. When you read in the commentary on a lot of videos, you will hear people referring to my brother Roy as a former police officer or retired police officer. That's not correct. He is today currently employed as a municipal police officer. Drives around, pulls people over and so forth. The last time he actually pulled somebody over was two or three days ago. So we are going to get the latest, greatest, up to datest true expert opinion. So what I'm going to do today is spend a whole lot less time talking so we can listen to somebody who truly is the subject matter expert. So enlighten us. All right, so with that, come some yabbits and caveats, mm. and that is nothing we tell you today should be taken as legal advice. Nothing should be taken as legal advice. Mm -hmm. It's based on our experiences being pulled over, pulling over people, being pulled over, contacting people in the military, those kind of things. Okay? It's based on my career and experiences in, we'll just say it because we know where we live, the state of Oregon. I am not versed on all 50 states laws, but I do know some common sense things and what we should be doing and how to make an encounter with law enforcement when you're armed, a successful, everybody goes home encounter. Also keep in mind that everything we say is based off of you legally possessing the firearm at the time. If not legally possessing it, then nothing we say applies. The only thing I would say is if you're illegally possessing your firearm, stop doing that. Yes, don't do that. So, couple do's and a few don'ts. Do know the laws in your area you live in. Do know the laws of where you're traveling to. So a lot of states have concealed handgun licenses or permits, whatever the title is where you have yours from, that cover multiple states. Those multiple states do not all have the same laws. So you must know if you're traveling to a different state, what a round or a projectile in the firing position means, what loaded firearm means, what concealed means. I learned the other day that sometimes you, if you have a concealed handgun license, you cannot open carry. If you don't, you can, it's weird, but those are the kind of things we're talking about. Do follow within reason requests that when you're contacted by law enforcement, they make like keep your hands visible, move slowly, tell them where the firearm is, i.e. if it's on your hip, shoulder holster, etc. Okay. Do keep your vehicle documentation separate from where you keep your firearm. Don't Put them both in the glove box or the center console. Don't keep them together. Don't give any reason for you to reach toward documentation that there's a firearm near. Do make slow, deliberate movements. And again, i.e., we're going to show you in a little bit. We're going to do a demonstration. But if I have my wallet here and my firearm's next to it in the on my hip carry, I don't want to just reach back there and move my shirt where a partner over here may see it or somebody because cops hate surprises, especially in the dark, especially when they're a rural cop out in the middle of nowhere. You can understand that. That's why you're carrying a firearm because you hate surprises. So keep in mind, in some places, if you have a concealed handgun license, you're allowed to carry a firearm. In some places, you can carry multiple firearms. Know which is which and don't get cute. If you say, oh, I'm carrying this gun, and then you don't tell them about the other one, nobody thinks that's funny. There's very little sense of humor about such things. 
also, as Roy was talking about, uh, obey the requests of law enforcement. There have been times where law enforcement has told me to do things. They had no authority whatsoever to tell me. Made requests, they have no authority to make. But you have to really think about whether or not you want to obey such things and comply with such things. The vast majority of the time, do what you're told. You can file a complaint with internal affairs later. Starting an argument that turns into a roadside debate never is a winner for anybody. Let me tell you an anecdote. I'm traveling with my friend Joe. Yes, Joe is a real person. I just changed his name. And not me. <laughs> and not... I'm not Joe, for no, everybody guessing. You've never seen Joe. Hey, we're traveling in two different cars. Joe didn't quite make the yellow light. He got pulled over. He has his rifle on the seat next to him, loaded 100% legal in that jurisdiction at that time. The police officer orders him to unload it, disassemble it, put it in the trunk. That police officer had no authority whatsoever to tell Joe to do that. But of course, Joe complied with that. Getting into an argument never turns into a win for anybody. You can file a complaint later. You can file your grievances later. The next day in the office or when represented by your attorney is the time to say, hey, that cop told me to do that and he has no authority to do that. He needs some remedial training. There on the scene is not the time to say, you can't tell me that you don't know what you're doing. We've all Nobody seen the videos. wins that. <laughs> We've all seen the videos from both sides, folks. <laughs> That being said, again, know if you have to declare you have a firearm. In Oregon, you don't. You don't have to tell me you have a concealed handgun license or that you have a firearm on you or with you. Various states do require that. I understand that. But know those laws specifically. Don't assume that I'm going to know in Oregon again or the cop knows before he stops you that you have a concealed handgun license. Because a lot of times we contact people, make traffic stops. We haven't run their name and all that stuff first. So assume that he doesn't know anything about you. That's why he's asking for your driver's license, things like that. Right? So keep your hands where they can be seen. Make slow movements. If you are required to, declare you have one. Follow reasonable commands. I don't think it's reasonable to ask you to take it out of the holster and put it somewhere. Okay, it's safer in your damn holster or up on the dash. As far as I know, no cop anywhere has the right to take your firearm from you and run the serial number to make sure it's not stolen. Okay. Again, make sure you know the laws, where you live and where you carry. So you want to do a demonstration? Yeah. Let's With that, let us get reset. We're going to do a demonstration. So I'm dressed up in a little bit of garb today, and uh, we'll be right back. Hello, I'm Officer Harrow with your local police department. The reason I stopped you today is that you didn't make a complete stop at the stop sign back there. Do you oh. have any reason you didn't stop completely? I'm sorry, I thought I did come to a complete okay. stop. Okay, all right. May I see your driver's license, registration, proof of insurance, please? Absolutely. Um, in no threatening manner, I should inform you that I am legally carrying a pistol on my right hip. That being said, my wallet is in my front right-hand pocket. Okay, go ahead and grab your wallet from your pocket. Sure. Make sure you uh, just leave the gun where it is for now, okay? Yeah, yeah absolutely, Let's go ahead and sir. do that. You don't have to move as slow as a ghost, but... And do you have a permit in the state of Oregon? I do, yes. There you All right. go. Thank you. I'd go back. I'd confirm everything. I'd make my decision about my traffic stop. All right. There you go, sir. So I appreciate you telling me that. Uh, just make sure that you make a complete stop when you're driving through here, please. And uh, otherwise, thanks for your cooperation today. Absolutely, officer. Have a great rest of your day. All right. Good afternoon. How are you doing? I'm Officer Harrell with the local police department. The reason I came out here is that uh, the property owner likes us to drive around every once in a while, keep an eye on things. I haven't seen you before. I don't see a car here close. 
So I was just wondering what you're doing out here and if you have permission. Gotcha. Yeah, I have uh, friends with the owner of this property. They've given me permission to be out here. I was taking a little stroll in through nature and was going to maybe do a little shooting here. Okay. You mind if I get your ID real quick for me? I'll write that down. I'll call the owner, make sure we're good to go. No, not okay. at all. Uh, all right. It's going to be right here in my front pocket. Do you okay. mind if I grab it? No, go ahead and grab just your ID. All right. And uh, Oregon has open carry, so I don't have to worry about any of that. You're, you're legal as long as you're not wanted or anything. You're good to go. So I go back, I check everything, I make sure I call the property uh, owner and they know he's out here and you give him permission. So everything's fine, everything's legal. All right, John, there you go. Thanks a lot. Thank you very uh, much. Just make sure when you're out here shooting that you either shoot into the backstop where the targets are or you know where your bullet's going because it's, you know, even with a handgun, um, there, I can see a building down there people get freaked out, right? So sure. just make sure you know where the bullet's landing, all right? No problem, Appreciate thank you for your time today. It. Hopefully we showed you a couple examples of how things should go when everybody's legal and cooperative and respectful to each other. And on the word of respect, let me add a couple of things to this. We see that as John gets pulled over and the officer comes up and talks to him, okay, one of the things that I've found is a really good thing to do is do not lie or try to get out of anything when you're talking to the police. Of course, you have a right not to talk to them, but if you're going to say anything, don't lie. You ran the yellow light, take responsibility for it. And so as the police officer walks up to me, and I've got my hands on the open window here, as he walks up, I start by saying something like, is that light a little too yellow? Yeah, I was afraid of that. Now he knows you're not going to try to lie to him, and everybody knows why we're here. You build a really good rapport when you do that. And when he tells me he needs to see my driver's license and so forth, I say, no problem, I'll be happy to show that to you. It's in my wallet, in my right back pocket, and my pistol is in my shoulder holster, in my right armpit. What do you want me to do? And that police officer will usually give you very e clear, easy to understand instructions. And when you comply with those, move slowly. Not comic book slow that takes all day, but don't say, okay, <laughs> slow. That's the one thing I wanted to add. Yeah, good mm -hmm. advice. With that, when you put your hands out the window or on the steering wheel, that's sending a message already anyway, that you probably have a firearm, that you don't want to get accused of doing something you were furtive or suspicious or too quick. Mm -hmm. So it's all good idea. Remember, try not to keep your vehicle documentation where you keep your firearm if it's not on your body. Be respectful. Hopefully, everybody will be respectful. With that, I hate to say it, but I'm going to anyway. Keep in mind that there are places in this country that law enforcement believe only law enforcement should have guns and nobody else should. And if you do, you're a bad guy. It's unfortunate. It's the way it is. And if you live in those places, you know you do. Now, that being said, roadside in the dark, daylight, out in the middle of nowhere, the mm -hmm. cops by himself and so on, is not the time to get into those arguments about who's right, who's wrong. We need to try to maintain everything as respectful as possible. And if you're not treated with respect, go file the complaint, the lawsuit, whatever it is later in the field at the moment is not the time to try to settle who's right and who's wrong. Okay? It is an unfortunate thing that there is a really, truly, a very small minority of police officers that have certain opinions and practice what they call the should be law. They don't think that you should have guns. And therefore, they're willing to lie to make a case against you when they know that you didn't do anything. It is a small minority, and unfortunately, I have dealt with such police officers on a few occasions. And you will gain nothing by exacerbating the situation with telling everybody all about your rights. Obey the instructions if possible. Mm -hmm. File the complaint or report or lawsuit or get your attorney at some time other than right now. I know that sounds harsh, and I know no one wants to have to, to be on the wrong end of abuse and do nothing about it. But again, you've got to play it smart.
<laughs> and if you play it smart and if you play it honest and you're right up front about things, you'll find that 99% of the time the police will be too. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's what we hope for everybody. Is everybody goes home with the same number of holes they, came, they left home with. That all being said, hopefully you learned something from today. Remember, always know the laws where you are. If you need legal advice, consult an attorney and get out, train, practice, know your equipment so you're always the best prepared for the worst case situations.